I get paid monthly and it feels great when that money hits my bank account. It's one of the happiest days of the month for me. But just imagine getting the same feeling but without having to work. Well, if that's something you'd like, then carry on watching as I share my top three funds on Hargifts Lansdowne with the highest monthly income. After doing a lot of research, I have narrowed down to these top three funds. So one of them are equity funds, so you'll get monthly dividends. The second is a bond fund, so you get monthly interest income. And the third is a multi-asset fund, which invests in both stocks and bonds, so you can get the best of both worlds. Since I invest with Hargibbs Lansdowne and I'm familiar with the platform, I have done the research on them. You can do something similar based on whichever platform that you use. The main criteria that I used was to have at least 4% of dividend yield or an income annually. And then I have narrowed down my search based on cost and performance. The first fund on my list in no particular order is Legal and General High Income Fund. They have both the income and the accumulation units for these. But since the focus of this video is regular income, I will be looking at the income share class. This is a bond fund, especially a high yield bond fund. What this means is that these bonds are generally riskier than government bonds and other high rated bonds but it is essentially why you are expected to get a higher level of income from them than investing simply with government. It pays out income as interest at 5.7% at the moment. Remember, this is an annual number, but you get the money monthly. You can see in the latest fact sheet that according to the distribution, they have paid out a 0.21p per unit in November, 0.25p per unit in October, 0.22p per unit in September. And they have been paying this money consistently per month. So as you can see, it is a fairly consistent amount every month. So for example, let's say you have £10,000 invested in this fund, then you can expect to receive around £570 per year just based on income. This does not take into account any increase or decrease in the underlying capital value. In my opinion, one of the positive aspects of investing in this fund is their fees. It only charges you 41 basis points for active management on this bond fund. It is one of the lowest actively managed bond fund that I've found on Hargaves Lansdown. Anyways, fees and charges and cost, they are one of the things that I feel we should definitely always pay attention to because as investors, although we cannot control the performance of the fund that we invest in, but with fees is definitely something that is in our control. So lower the better. But how about performance then? Let's check out the performance of this fund. In the last five years, the fund was up just under 25% and this includes total return. So the interest that they pay you is included in this number. But if you look at price return, it is rather negative. Since July this year, the price return has been negative for this fund. And among many things, one of the reasons is because prices of bonds are negatively correlated with interest rate. Since the market is pricing in rate increases, so the price of this bond fund has been negatively impacted. This is a really important point because if you're someone who's looking to quickly grow your money or grow the base of your capital over time, then this fund, as you can see, is unlikely to be suitable for you. This is not an investment advice. This is just to break down to you the difference between you know, growing your money or getting a regular source of income. So in terms of monthly income, uh, going back to my example of if you were to invest £10,000, getting a £570 in income per year, if you divide that number by 12, you get just under £50. So that's like a £50 per month in income by investing in this fund with a capital of around £10,000. Now, when it comes to this monthly income, or interest income, one of the key things to remember when investing in a bond fund is the interest rate risk that you're taking by investing your money in bond. As you know that interest rate and bond prices are negatively correlated, so when interest rate goes up, bond performance goes down. To really understand how sensitive a bond fund is to interest rate, we can look at two numbers. One is duration and the other one is maturity. Bond maturity tells you total maturity or age of all the underlying bonds that this fund holds. So it is the time by which the companies must pay back the original money that they have borrowed from you. So longer the maturity, more risk an investor takes because an investor will then be exposed to a long time between which 
interest rate can actually change impacting the performance of the bond fund anyway you can see that in this fund most of the bonds are between zero to five years in maturity this means it's at the lower end in terms of maturity risk duration on the other hand tells you what will happen to the fund performance if interest rates increases or decreases since this fund has duration of 3.8 years it means that all things equal if interest rate increases by 1%, the fund could lose value by 3.8%. So even though bond funds are relatively safer than investing in stocks and shares or an equity fund, there are still risks involved, especially interest rate risk, that you should bear in mind before investing in a bond fund. Now let's move on to our second fund, which is an equity fund. The name of the second fund is UBS Global Enhanced Equity Income Fund, which charges you around 0.76% and pays out a monthly dividend with an annual yield of 8.9%. If you read the fact sheets, you'll see that the fund targets an income of at least 10% or more than MSCI Equi Index. So with this fund, based on our current environment, you can expect to get a very high level of dividend yield. Although the high level of yield may not be sustainable year after year going forward, However, even with this fund, you do have a better growth potential for your money. As you can see from performance since 2014, after taking away fees, the fund has returned just under 15%. In annual terms, it returned roughly 3% per year over the last five years. So if you invest in this fund, what stocks will you be ultimately holding? Well, you can see that 50% of the fund is holding US-based companies, followed by Japan at around 11%. What's pretty interesting is that a big chunk of this fund is invested in information technology, which is not really an income sector. So what I would say is that the current yield of 8.9% is not something you can expect to see year after year. It is probably high now because the stock prices are low. But in terms of income, with £10,000 invested, this fund should roughly give you £75 per month or £890 per year. You can check out more information about this fund in terms of sector and geography by visiting their website or reading their fact sheets. Let's move on to our final fund, which is a multi-asset fund. The one I'm talking about is Schroeder's Monthly Income Fund. The charge with this fund is little on the high end at around 0.91%. But because it is able to invest in a lot of different types of assets from equities, bonds and real estate securities, they try to justify this high cost. The fund has an income target of 5% per annum and it will be compared against the investment association with the 20 to 60% shares. This means the fund will hold at least between 20 to 60% in stocks or equities and the rest can be held in bonds or other fixed income products. If you actually look at their holdings, you'll see that it pretty much follows what we call a fund of fund structure. Basically, it strategically holds other funds in order to give you a diversified return and income. If you want to quickly check out the performance, you can see that it has a total return of roughly 20% over last five years. So with a 5% income, you can basically expect to receive roughly 500 pounds per year from 10,000 pounds invested which equates to roughly 42 pounds per month. Well guys, that's all I had for today. I hope you found this video useful and until next time, do look after yourself and your money.